So, we already nuzlocked the Pokemon Creepypasta game. What could be next in terms of Pokemon content for this spooky season? Well, the answer to this is simple. Creepy ROM hacks, or Halloween based ones, whichever you prefer. Today we'll be playing through not one, but two entire nuzlocks in one video. The games will be Pokemon Rose Halloween hack, and Pokemon Curse version, which has been infamously coined the scariest Pokemon ROM hack. So, will Pokemon Curse live up to its name? And does Pokemon Rose have the Halloween spirit? Let's find out. Before we get into this, let's set some ground rules. Keeping it simple this time around, and due to the builds of these games, some rules won't apply because they simply can't be practiced. Catching the first Pokemon in every route won't be able to be used, so with that goes dupes claws as well. As far as the rest, I'll adhere to them as best as I can. These of course are, if a Pokemon faints, it's no longer usable, and no items in battle. Alright, let's get into it. We'll start this video off with the Pokemon Rose Halloween hack. The game starts by placing you in a room and giving you a randomized team of 6 Pokemon to use against all of the trainers placed in the game. They also give you 10 Pokeballs, but those aren't really viable since you can't use the PC anyway and you already have a full team as stated earlier. After checking my team out, I ended up with a Jolly Natured Infernape with Mach Punch, Flame Wheel, Close Combat, and Flare Blitz, a Calm Venusaur with Double Edge, Petal Dance, Worry Seed, and Synthesis, a Naughty Murkrow with Taunt, Faint Attack, Mean Look, and Dark Pulse, a Bold Roserade with Dazzle, Poison Jab, Sludge Bomb and Energy Ball, a Lonely Ferrothorn with Thunder Wave, Power Whip, Bleach Seed and Explosion, and finally a special Jolly Onyx with Power Gem, Rock Polish, Light Screen, and Rock Wrecker. There are only three places in the game that you can actually battle trainers. The route to the left of the main city, the route to the bottom of the main city, and the cave that's past the bottom route. There are also two kinda mini boss battles, you'll see what I mean. We start on the route to the left of the main city. The first battle was pretty simple, nothing too serious. The next battle was more of the same, completely swept by Venusaur. The third battle was also a sweep. At this point I was more or less getting comfortable thinking that this route would be easy. And that's exactly where I made my mistake. The next battle starts off fine. I easily take out the first Pikachu with close combat. The second one comes out and I try the same, only to be obliterated by Volt Tackle. Not a good omen for things to come. After getting rid of that Pikachu, they took out a Rotom Heat of all things, which took out Murkrow and almost destroyed Onix, who luckily landed a Rock Wreck for taking it out. One battle and two Pokemon lost already. This isn't looking too good. The next battle wasn't anything terrible. The only Pokemon that really scared me was Infernape, but luckily a Rock Wrecker ended that. The next battle was nearly a clean sweep. At this point, I'm on edge, but I'm slowly relaxing yet again. Starting this battle off, we get a Porygon. Z who almost KOs my Venusaur and Ferrothorn before I take it out. Then I make my worst play yet, sending out a Roserade against an Archaeops. For what reason I truly don't know. After losing Roserade, I send out an Onyx and take it out with a Rock Wrecker. Magnezone takes out my Onyx as well, leaving me with only Venusaur and Ferrothorn. After setting up a Leech Seed, Ferrothorn barely survives and takes Magnezone out. At this point, I still have two areas of trainers left and only two Pokemon. It seems like this is basically impossible. However, You'll never know if you don't try. The first battle starts off fine. I set up Leech Seed and Thunder Wave against Pidgeot before whittling it down with Power Whip. And then I make the worst play of my entire life. While moving to use Leech Seed against Togekiss, I accidentally misclicked and selected Explosion. And the worst part is that it didn't even knock the Togekiss out. <sighs> With only Venusaur left, I double edge the Togekiss and move on to the next battle. This ended up being a very lucky Petal Dance slash Double Edge Fest that resulted in very little HP loss. The Scientist Trainer wasn't too bad either, although I admittedly thought Rayonicus would KO Venusaur with Psychic or something. The next trainer almost took me out with her Jellicent, but other than that, there weren't really any problems. The first Cave Trainer started off fine with me easily KOing their Conkeldur. Then Gallade came out. Thinking I could take it out with one Double Edge, I went for it. Little did I know this mistake would almost cost me the win. Gallade used Psycho Cut and combined with the recoil it was a close shave however I still ended up taking it out with the pedal dance. As long as there were no fire or flying types I would be okay. And in comes Officer Davis. He leads with an Arcanine of course. I attempt double edge and then use worry seed thinking that it would cause some type of stat drop however of course it just caused the Arcanine to have insomnia which didn't help at all. After a fire fang and extreme speed the run was over. But that's not where it ends. After a reset and getting a way better randomized team, I took on Officer Davis yet again. This time I used a Feraligator which made the Arcanine no problem. Unsurprisingly, he had another fire type next, that being Magmortar. After easily taking that out, it was time to see what the rest of the trainers were about. The next trainer leads with Yamega, which is easily taken out before going to Sylveon, who is also relatively easily taken out with Blaze Kick. After that, a Ruin Maniac battles me and leads with a Bronzong before going into a Golurk and ending with a Cuff of Grigus. The next Ruin Maniac leads with a Regigigas. Yes, you read and saw that right, that Regigigas. It's his only Pokemon luckily enough, and because of that I thought that even without fighting moves it would be easy for Blaziken to knock it out. 
That is, until it used Drain Punch. After that, I decided to use a legendary of my own, that of course being Deoxys and use Superpower. So far, so good. Now, there's only one battle left in this game, Ace Trainer Colton. He leads with a Glass Score, which wasn't too bad before going into the terrifying Excadrill. At this point, I'm hoping my Girder can take it out, and luckily it gets the 1-8 KO with Hammer Arm, however, it got half of its HP knocked off in the process. Ferrothorn then finishes his Rhyperior off with a Power Whip. Overall, not too bad of a run. It was a fun preview of sorts for a possible full game which I couldn't find any rounds for. Hopefully they finish it one day. And with that, let's get on to Cursed. Now Pokemon Cursed has been said to be the scariest Pokemon ROM hack ever made. As someone who is currently working on a Pokemon Snakewood challenge and has already beat a creepypasta game, I'm not sure if I would necessarily agree, but I will say that the game is amazing in its own right. The game starts off in your home where you pick up your Pokemon Marowak off of the table before going outside. You're in Saffron City and everyone is trick or treating and enjoying the Halloween spirit. After going around and picking up some rare candies, you get to battle your mother Sabrina. And if you're me, you idiotically white because you decided to use Bone Meringue instead of Headbutt, but that happens. On attempt 2, I barely scrape past Gengar and defeat Sabrina who grants me her gym badge. After grabbing the item finder, trust me, we'll need it in order to actually beat this game. I pick up my first ghost shard. To make a long story short, although I'm not exactly sure what they are, you need a certain amount of ghost shards in order to get the good ending which is the only route that is possible to Nuzlocke since the bad ending is always an instant wipe. Then I realize I can't talk to the security guard that lets you in. Kind of a problem. After re-downloading the game from a different website to see if things would change, I ended up noticing a trainer battle I'd missed. Before you fight Sabrina, you can fight the leader of this group of kids who are egging houses I'm pretty sure. The first time I fought him I wiped out, but the second time I won. Off camera, the security guard still didn't work so I enabled walk through walls to get past him only for his dialogue to suddenly now work? I have no idea if that was coincidence or not but regardless let's keep going. I began picking up ghost pieces in the tower when the first large obstacle comes up. The possessed scientist that drops one of the pieces. After wiping out to him once, I end up losing to Sabrina around 4 times before I finally make it back to him and defeat him, getting the shard. I then get the remaining ghost pieces before catching a haunter because the walkthrough told me to and nicknaming it <laughs> scary. I then use the ghost pieces on this, I guess, haunted laptop and activate an elevator. This ends up not loading for me the first time, but the second time it does, thankfully. Now it's time for the final battle, which, plot twist, is your father. He throws out a Porygon that locks itself into spamming curse before it gets knocked out and then sends out an admittedly scary Dusclops that I was worried it would force me to reset again. Luckily it cursed itself and combined with Boomerang that did the trick. And then we basically saved the universe or something. So there you go, two Pokemon games in one video, and not just games but Halloween games, and not just gameplay but Nuzlocke's, not bad if I say so myself. As I said before, I'm working on a very painful blind snakewood playthrough challenge that I'll hopefully be releasing soon, and if I make it before the month is over, I have one more creepy ROM hack that I haven't seen in anyone else play that I'd like to try out. With all that being said, please like, comment, and sub with notifications on to see whatever I end up making next. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.